Okay, so finally I get the time to test this um, ducted or duct on my propeller and uh, I've been running with it now for like all season and it's been pretty good I think. Alright, I'm gonna just um, make a few recordings with this underwater camera. So maybe we can get some idea of the... Um idea of the flow going on. Very good um, directional control. Yep, this looks really good. The last piece um, of my duck and uh, third piece coming out of the 3D printer here. So, very nice. See all these little. Yeah, so I was just uh, wet sanding the surface of this after printing it, and especially the uh, connection surfaces here. Now I was thinking of uh, just gluing them together. I already just put a little piece of tape to hold these in place while gluing it, so that I I'm sure to get the right angle. And I'm using this very toxic uh, cold chain glue. I think I will actually open the doors because to get some ventilation while using it. Okay, so I managed to glue them together and by the help of a bit of a tape, uh, a few tape pieces to just hold it in place while I was gluing. And this guy goes like in here, fits quite nicely actually. I'm just gonna have to grind off some of these pieces. Just need to. It's about like going from half and then. Yeah, so if I just. I think I'll just grind it down. Uh, like straight, flat, not 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 following the curve. And then I need to glass up the whole thing. And fit this to the bottom of the. Drill some holes. Attach it on the the bottom piece of the uh, engine. So I was just testing the vacuum bag and it seems like it can wrap around the whole entire way. Um, now I've been sitting here for about an hour uh, with the loop, like with the vacuum on uh, and the bag is just like a very cheap thing from a I think it's for clothes, it's from a building market it was like two dollars or something, very cheap. Um, but that means I can glass everything up and then just uh, wrap the bag around. Um, and maybe I can even, because there is a gap in this area on the inside that it doesn't reach and press. So maybe I should try and get the whole seam, like the seam going at this very edge. Yeah, so one of the 
<coughs> most important things I think when doing uh, some glass fiber uh, work is to prepare really well. So to have everything like at hand and make sure it fits and yeah, so that you're not going to cut something with a pair of scissors when you have your fingers soaked in epoxy resin. And so I'm trying to really prepare like every little thing that I'm gonna need and I to anticipate what I'm gonna do before I mix in the resin because I have the pot life that's gonna be limited and uh, yeah the more time you have Oh, that's nice. The better it gets, the more freshly mixed and viscous the epoxy is when it uh, when it's in the mold, the better I think. I think this fits like. Up, 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 up. Yep, that's kind of enough at least. Yeah, prepared some more and kind of about to get my thoughts on how to mix it up. I guess always start with the uh, part one and I'm never really sure how much to mix up before I start kind of I mean I don't know how many grams I'm just you know eyeballing it on like yeah like that much so if we go this should be quite enough but let's just uh, go up to 50 I have a boat outside I can smear something onto I have a leftover yeah Let's say, oops, that's like 50. Oh shit. Taste of glass fiber. These are milled fibers. Quite handy for small things and repairs and very thin layers. And it goes up, mixes up like, oh, uh, like a salad. So it really, you don't need to put much, and will get very, very hairy because they look like there's a few hairs, but it's like. Thousands of hairs, uh, or thousands of glass fibers uh, in bundles. So once you mix it up with the epoxy, it, they split up and it goes into this kind of paste. So now I have a nice paste that I can put. But first of all, I'll just goo it all up.
Okay, well, that was chaotic. So, I almost had the vacuum bag totally fixed and fine, and then it punctured. And yeah, so I had to take another vacuum bag and add a little bit of resin. And so I'm all out of resin, and I just, it was just like enough, I hope. And uh, yeah. It's over there curing. I don't want to touch it because the vacuum might uh, go off. Okay, so when I came back and had to take it out of the mold or out of the vacuum, it seems like the vacuum has let go a bit. So it's not really vacuum in here any longer. So let's see how it goes. I'm not sure when the vacuum uh, released, but uh, I uh, checked up on it two hours after after setting it, and then the vacuum was still on. But it feels very. Solid, sturdy. A good sound. Yep, yeah, lots to do with this. nice to cut the edge here. Maybe I can get a Stanley in that way. So this is nice, before it's completely cured one can actually cut it so you don't sand the fibers and get all this airborne particles. Yep, so let's put this on here and I'm just, been just going to mark out like in which area I can do the holes. So this is where my end piece go and then I can easily transfer the when I decide where to put the holes. Can sort of transfer that mirror that on to the other side and mark the holes out. So I think I'll have one in front, one in the back and one in the middle. Quite close to the edge. Yeah.
Okay, so I've been uh, going it up, and now it's uh, just 20 hours after after putting that coat on, on top. I also made some repairs to the motor, like taking off the the broken paint or the paint that had like holes and some corrosion under, taking the corrosion away from the aluminium, and then giving it epoxy on top. It's pretty nice. Lasts for a bit. Uh, some spots here and there, but then I uh, I have already attached the whole thing. I just wanted to show you this uh, cap I did. Um, so the propeller sits just by a by a bolt. And um, yep. And then there's a hole through this. That's why the bolt is cut up so that a, that a split fits through here and prevents the bolt from turning. Um, yeah, there's the hole like this. Um, and I'm also using the split to prevent this from falling off. So the hole going through this way is also holding the split. But because I couldn't open the split and close it again while the cap is on, I put in some stop screws that both holds the split in place uh, but also uh, can be Yeah, now it's just finding a luggage weight and seeing how how much it it pulls. Oh yeah, and the connection down here I've put the C C section, hammered it on. Not sure I can get it off again. Hopefully, just get it off to measure the the pull force at uh, at idle and full speed to just see if it actually gives any extra. But it definitely gives some uh, safety um, from people in the water, preventing them from being chopped up. And yeah, and sanding, I can do that, like the final sanding in a few hours when it's a little bit more cured. And then it's testing. Thank <laughs> you.